Hello, everyone. So for this moment, for this opportunity, I'm going to breeze through a quick and concise tutorial on how to get a reading on wind flow in uh, Autodesk CFD simulation. So basically, you'd want to click New, and then you can choose the um, 3D file that you want to simulate. I strongly advise using SAT format for this because it's the most optimized and is actually the a recommended format to use in Autodesk CFD and all other Autodesk uh, 3D softwares, basically. So you can just open it and then click. You can just give it a name and there will be three options. You would want to choose model diagnostic because surface wrap is usually uh, opted for less optimized uh, formats. So usually SketchUp or objects, so OBG and SKP, but then you'd want model diagnostic because this gives you more leeway and more options in terms of uh, simulation. Also, you'd also be able to see the outline of the model as you see the viewing plane as you finish the simulation. So basically, you want a model diagnostic and then just, just click it. Then you see until the model translation is done. This is a fairly simple model, which uh, I've used multiple times to demonstrate the amount of flow and then how uh, simple polygons are preferred in terms of field simulations because it makes the uh, interaction between fluid and solids easier. So something that has small uh, elements might be unfavorable. So you can just transfer to setup and then it's going to take you to a uh, tab which shows geometry tools then usually depending on how accurate or how precise you are with your 3d modeling you would uh, usually see some gaps that have yet to be merged completely and you can just always merge them and then sometimes there are small objects you'd want to remove sometimes uh, there isn't usually a good model will show you no small objects if you uh, connect connect your models correctly. So just uh, remove if there are any. These are tolerances, surfaces, and edges. Uh, there are two options that you may use once you've already fixed your model. Usually if there's some, some errors with the simulation, sometimes, most of the time, it's usually with the models. So you can just always check the... Uh, precision of your model or how it's uh, treated if there's any missing elements on it. For the simulations, there are two ways to approach it. It's a void fill if you want an isolated system, usually with uh, some oddly shaped, and then you want uh, some oddly shaped uh, volume or area, and then you, and you want the simulation to only take place within the uh, isolated system within the interior of the, the building or the, the system, usually within pipes and, and whatnot. The external volume is what we're going to use today. And then this is going to be some of the most common ways to, to use CFD, which is basically you're creating a bounding box, which will uh, act as the uh, air or the wind, sorry, the volume of air around your object. So in which case you would want as much leeway as possible. So you're going to take these, um, arrows and you're going to drag them outwards as far as you deem appropriate, usually not uh, too much, but because uh, a small bounding box will increase the likelihood of the air that's rushing in and interacting with the uh, object to actually rebound from the walls of the bounding box and then into the model back again. So uh, usually people go for a larger than comfortable bounding box to eliminate that uh, risk, basically. But I feel like this, this should be enough. Then we can see later. You may rotate this if you want, and then uh, it can have something like that or like that. But we're going to opt for zero degrees. You can also put uh, exact dimensions of bounding box if you want to uh, make them certain. You can just create, then we can wait. 
But with simpler models, this usually takes a very short time. And then you want you would want to work from left to right or just uh, see the descriptions of the objects as you see fit. But first of all, you would want to uh, assign the materials of the, the object and also the bounding box itself. So this, this bounding box, you can just right click and then click the outline. So this is the bounding box that we've uh, made. And then we can assign it to a material, which is fluid. And then we can choose different uh, types of fluid. For this case, we want air. You can choose variable air if you want uh, some interactions with the uh, temperature and whatnot. I usually just choose variable air and set it to a variable. But uh, if you want it to be quick, you can just uh, choose fixed, especially if you don't work with uh, temperatures. Then just click apply. And then all of this uh, part inside of the body, if it's .sat or something else optimized for this program, you can uh, select different volumes as different materials and different uh, properties, which you wouldn't be able to do with surface wrap. Then you can just uh, click everything and then right click. You can uh, put it to whatever, whatever uh, kind of viewing you want. We're just going to leave it as is and then edit the material properties as solid. You can choose the type of material that you want. Uh, for now, I'm going for concrete, then apply, and then that's it. And then we can go to boundary conditions. This is basically the behavior of the materials that you have uh, assigned as it goes through the simulations. So usually you want to assign the simplest one is velocity and pressure to make this uh, act as a wind tunnel. Basically, you uh, make sure it's surface and then click one surface in which the start of the wind is going to come and then uh, it's going to go into that direction to blow air through the object that you're trying to simulate. So you make sure it's velocity and then you can choose whatever speed that you want. And then for my settings of uh, Auto the CFD, it actually uses comma as a uh, symbol for decimals. So for example, if I want to put 2.5 meters per second, actually 2,5, and then click apply. And then at, on the other side of the bounding box, you can just click it and then edit, and then it's pressure. It's zero pascals. Click apply so that the wind can actually uh, pass through and not to the sides of the to the uh, other sides of the bounding box. So this is basically it. If you want to add a temperature, you can add it here. But for now, we can just solve. This is the iterations. The more, the longer these the simulation is going to be, and the more accurate it's going to be, usually. But you can uh, play around with the number of iterations to run. Usually, it's uh, around less than 100. Perhaps it's 80, perhaps it's 60, 50. For this simulation, I'm going to just uh, take 20. And then these uh, flow, and then compressible or not. Sometimes it can be compressible or not compressible. But uh, usually, uh, if it's a simple uh, wind flow simulation, you can just uh, go with the default setting. You don't, we don't need a heat run. So you can just uh, click solve once uh, you're sure. Then just wait until the simulation is done. Usually, when the graph of the velocity and other vectors are uh, visible, you can check if the simulation is running smoothly or not, because you can check if some of the elements or some of the aspects of the simulation goes awry or normal, which we would see just a little bit. So when the analysis has started, it will show this uh, plot. And then we will see some lines going through it like this. Because we don't use temperature, it's not going to show the red line. But you uh, may see the progression of the uh, simulation as the iteration goes by. And then you may see some velocities and maybe if uh, one line or two goes off the scale and then it uh, turns things to the extreme, then sometimes 
uh, you may be sure that something's gone wrong. Then we can just wait until the iteration shows uh, the number 20. This is especially true if uh, I'm only going for uh, wind flow simulation, no temperature. If it's uh, with auto force convection, and then the uh, iteration will be much, much higher than this, sometimes three to four times as high. So when the analysis has completed successfully, especially because this model is very simple, you can just uh, go straight to the viewing once you see this analysis completed successfully uh, dialogue. Right now, I'm going to change the units to meters a second, then click planes, and then you can click add, and then this is going to give us a section which will dissect the entire model within the bounding box. So you may see from this uh, axonometrical projection that uh, there are some gradients of colors associated with the legend that's shown here as velocity magnitude. And you may play around with the different uh, max and minimum of the, the readings based on your preferences. But uh, right now it's not needed for this demonstration. So you can just close. And then if you want the vectors, you can just click vector setting, then click the velocity vector. You can play around with the length of the uh, arrows and then the density of the arrows based on what you need to see from the complexity or the scale of your, of your model. This should be enough for this. And then you can see from the top view like this that uh, we can see that, that our model's got some uh, quite normal uh, wind flow going through. And then we can see that the, the heights you can adjust. Basically, if you point your cursor at uh, any point of the viewing plane, you can see the uh, Z value at the left, uh, bottom left hand side, which so is in millimeter in my case. So it's 157 millimeters, which is about one and a half meters above ground. And we can see from this case, it's showing a range from basically no velocity at all to about 1.4 meters a second inside of the building. So you can see the uh, with the option of regions, you can uh, check a few parts or areas of the uh, viewing plane of, of your model, the average value inside of the the uh, region. Basically, you can just add, usually I just use the rectangular region, and then you can click some parts of the, the model. Just first click, second click, third click, and then you can click calculate, and then it's going to show you the uh, exact number or value. Then click meters per second, then calculate again, it's going to show you the uh, value in meters per second. And you can uh, add as much as you like, the area, and as many the readings that you want. You can calculate like that. And it's going to uh, show you a different reading. You can calculate this again. And then you can remove, remove all. Then you can see some different um, areas of the building like that. But if you change elevation, it's going to disappear basically. So that's uh, the simplest way to see how wind goes through an object inside of the uh, bounding box in with uh, Autodesk CFD. The same logic will apply to most other uh, CFD simulations based on what software you use, but that's the basic of it. So basically you've got a velocity and then pressure and then act the bounding box as a wind tunnel and then see the velocity or the pressure inside of the bounding box, how it interacts with your objects and determine the exact value for the areas you want to observe. Thank you for your attention. Uh, if you want to explore the advanced options, then this uh, type of formats will be the most ideal. Thank you very much.